I'm sitting in a railway station, got a ticket for my destination. Stands my suitcase and guitar in hand Every stop is neatly planned For a poet and a one-man band bound. Hello there and welcome back to my channel My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen video Today we're going to look at a brand I've never tried before or even heard of Until just a few months ago And this is the Fountain Pen Revolution They are pens made in India But distributed out of Plano, Texas that's Plano, Texas, not plain old Texas. The pen I've just received is the Fountain Pen Revolution Himalaya version 2, or V2, in indigo blue. So let's unbox it and take a look at this gorgeous pen right now. <laughs> So here we are with the package from Fountain Pen Revolution. I've never actually purchased anything from FPR before. It's been recommended to me a number of times. Um, but they had a sale on recently, and I thought, what the hell? They're um, shipping from Texas now, and shipping is a little bit more reasonable than it was previously when I looked at their pens. So let's cut into this and see what we have here. Okay, I have a couple of cards. Fountain Pen Revolution. Some filling instructions for using a piston, a converter, cartridge, eyedropper. About FPR. I'll let you freeze that if you want to read it. And there's Kevin. I've seen some of the videos that Kevin puts out, and they're very interesting. I'm keen to give this pen a try. Thank you. 15% off. I think I'll, th I'll keep that. And I get a free fountain pen. Well, isn't that nice? Let's see. Here's the free pen. This is the one I'm interested in. And it is the Himalaya. Himalaya V2. I never had a V1. So I'm not sure what the differences are, but I'll get into that as I review this pen. At first glance, that resin is quite lovely. Very, very chatoyant. Look at that. Like that teardrop clip. Nice finial made of the same material cap with no markings on it, yeah, enough, no branding on the outside of the pen at all, and just a blunt end on this end. That's one, one and a half turns, and a section made of the same chatoyant material. That's very nice, very smooth, no step ups or step downs, you can't feel that at all little bit of flare and an FPR branded medium nib two-tone and an ebonite feed and the pen posts nicely it's a little long but it's very very light very interesting I'm gonna want to put this pen up against my other galaxies including my Moonman M800 Galaxy. Doesn't look like the same resin, doesn't feel like the same resin as the Moonman, but very interesting nonetheless. I will uh, clean this pen out 
and uh, put it through its paces. We'll do some uh, writing samples and some sizes and measurements and uh, take a look at this pen. Okay, I have to document this. I've been fighting with this pen for the last couple of days. As you can see, I'm having some inky experiments. Well, here's another nice mess you've gotten me into. Well, I could not have told me I was your new friend. This is the uh, fountain pen revolution Himalaya version 2. Uh, when I first disassembled the pen to clean it out and everything, the converter, it's the version 2 has this uh, new piston converter. The other one was a push-pull. And the nib was a 5.5 rather than the 6. Um, the pen is gorgeous. I mean, uh, you just saw the unboxing. This is a, a few days later. I've been working with this pen, uh, filling it up with KWZ, and I did that because this converter smelled so bad. There was some kind of a grease they put in here that just stinks to high heaven. Cool. So I took it all apart, soaked it for overnight in soap and water, cleaned it all out, pulled the converter apart, this section comes right off, and took all the pieces apart. I took a picture of that as well, and used my own silicone grease on it that doesn't smell, and filled it with my vanilla scented uh, queasy ink, and uh, thought, okay, well, um, I won't have any problems with it. But uh, when I first filled it up, I, uh, I filled up the converter with my syringe, as I normally do, uh, primed the feed so I could see some ink, and then put the barrel back on. And when I got to the barrel being almost completely on, it shot ink up out through the nib all over my hands. That was yesterday. So today I cleaned it out again, took the converter apart, re-greased it. This is a screw-in converter, by the way. Um, so I cleaned it all out. As you can see, I'm still having issues with it. So I decided this time I clean it out, um, put the silicone grease on it properly, put it all back together again, clean, dry, and I screwed the converter in, no ink, um, with the piston all the way down. This was as tight as I could get it in there. And then I put the nib down in the ink and drew the converter up. And it didn't start drawing ink until the converter was all the way back. And then I put it down again, and drew it up again. And I got about maybe half a fill of that converter. Um, and then I cleaned off the nib with a, with a Kleenex and okay, I'm ready to write, right? So I put the barrel back on, and when I got it to about here, it started shooting ink. There you can see it. Do it again, I'm showing that there's no ink here. And this is as tight as it will go. And the converter isn't leaking. And all it is is air pressure now. Air pressure going where, though? But if you notice, I'm screwing the barrel up. I'll try to close up on this. I'm going to do it slowly because I get ink on myself every single time. Doing it slowly. See that? It's burping. I'm turning it very slowly and letting the ink settle back down again. Uh, see it's burping up and down? So I keep turning this. If I turn it too fast, of course I just turned it right in and it just gushed all over me. Now I like being gushed on as much as the next guy, but not when it's ink like this. So when I try to slowly turn this up, somehow there's air pressure, there it is, air pressure going up into 
that feed and pushing ink out. I still haven't closed it all the way. There, now it's closed. When I did this before, yeah, I didn't get any ink. I'm getting ink this time. But uh, I wrote with it for uh, an hour or so yesterday, and it's very, very wet. Um, you can see how wet that is. Uh, and I knew it was going to be wet even before I inked it up uh, because I looked at the pen under my loop. I'm going to get rid of some of that ink. I don't know whether you can see that white through that nib. Way too much of a gap as far as I'm concerned. Now this is an ebonite feed. And uh, so sometimes that ebonite pushes those tines apart. And so you have to heat set it. So I'm going to take this nib and feed and put it in some boiling hot water. I'm going to also post some uh, snapshots of the FPR website and the comments. There are a number of comments about this pen burping and people having difficulty with their Himalayas burping on them. And this is exactly what's happening with this pen. And kudos to Kevin for responding to each one of those and leaving those comments up for other people to see it. You know, that's uh, great customer service. Kevin actually sent me a note after my order and said, call me if you have any issues. So there's some great customer support with FPR. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do this video anyway uh, and contact Kevin about this pen if I can't get it working. Okay, one more thing. I'm going to open this up to show you what happens inside the barrel after I've shoved all that ink up there. It's still spitting out. This is now all covered in ink. See that? All the way down to there. Okay, so now my water is boiling and I'm just going to put the nib down into the water. Try not to burn myself here. It's getting hot. Ow, my fingers are burning. And that gap seems to have decreased. I'll leave it in a little bit more. And it's careful not to put the resin in there, because that resin might uh, get damaged. I have to look at this under my loop to see whether that helped. So the good news is that that gap has shrunk with the heat treatment, but the tines actually touch each other right at the tip, which is perfect. This is completely dry, and we're going to set it into the ink properly. I got the section completely submerged, you can see. That I get almost all the way up, and a little bit of ink. And I'm going to keep it submerged all the way down, push all that air out, and back up. And it falls a little bit better. I'm not going to touch it. I'm not going to prime the feed. The barrel is clean and dry. And I'm going to put the barrel on. And we're going to close up and see what happens here. Slowly I turn, step by step, inch by inch, Niagara Falls. Go ahead. Try and make me say Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls! <laughs> And it's tight. No ink. Let's see whether it writes. Now this is the same issue I've been having for the last couple of days writing with this pen. Is the downstrokes and some of the letters are just missing. Say so it did it again. Check the wetness here still very very wet but I'm not having the burping issue now let's open this up and see whether I 
I've got ink in my barrel. It's hard to tell inside outside. Yep. Yep, it's still gushing out of there. See? So, it is still burping into the barrel. That's unfortunate. Okay, I will continue with the rest of the review. Nonetheless, parts and features. And then we'll do a writing sample at the end. And we'll talk a bit about this pen. Now that I've cleaned up after a terrifically messy time with the queasy ink, let's take a closer look at this fountain pen revolution Himalaya V2. As I said while dissecting this pen, the Himalaya V2 has a couple of changes from version 1. As I understand it, version 1 had a number 5.5 .5 nib and a push-pull converter, where version 2 has a number 6 nib and a piston converter. Version 2 also has a longer cap to accommodate the larger nib. Just an overall glance at the acrylic resin on this pen shows how really gorgeous it is. The photos don't do it justice, and it looks good next to my Moonman M800 and my Galaxy 500 P Pen BBS. Let's look from the very top. The top finial is made of the same acrylic resin and is a separate piece that actually unscrews from the cap and holds the clip in place. The finial tapers up to the cap, which also tapers up slightly, and then goes straight until we get to the cap ring, and there's no branding at all on that cap ring. The only branding on this pen is on the nib, and it's just the initials FPR. The chrome metal clip has a teardrop end, upturned end, and it's really flimsy. In fact, it's so flimsy I worry about bending it or breaking it if you put any pressure on it at all. There's a step down to the barrel, and it's straight until you get to about here where it tapers down towards the end, which is a rounded flat end. The cap unscrews with about one and eh, one and a half, one and a quarter turn and reveals a section made of the same material as the rest of the acrylic pen and a number six size two-toned fountain pen revolution nib. Now I'm going to wipe this because it's been bleeding ink into the cap all day. It's actually a rather attractive nib. As I said, it has FPR initials for Fountain Pen Revolution, two-toned, and an M for medium, and that feed is ebonite. The section tapers down to the nib and then flares out nicely, and those threads are very smooth, and there's no step up to the barrel whatsoever. The cap posts securely, and although it doesn't back weight the pen significantly, because that cap is very, very light, it does make it a little bit longer than is comfortable for me anyway. But that's fine because it uh, it's long enough to write unposted and very comfortable in the hand. The section unscrews. This is going to be ugly because it'll be full of ink. And we see a piston twist converter that screws into the section. You can see that the end of the ebonite feed is flat and there's just a bit of a channel right there. Just that little channel. The end of the converter doesn't uh, actually come in contact, I don't think, with the end of that feed. And that's why I think that uh, ink is getting through those threads and back into the, the barrel. And that uh, converter is proprietary. So uh, you can't use any other converter but this one. And also, that means you can't use cartridges with this pen either. All of the threads, both on the section and on the barrel and in the cap, feel 
a bit rough, like they aren't polished. And so I even put silicone grease on them to make them run a little bit smoother. But you can see those threads are kind of, and the resin there is kind of whitish. And also notice that the barrel only has about a half an inch of threads, and yet the cap is turned with threads for at least an inch inside there. So it makes me wonder about the engineering. Also inside the cap, there is a small step that's machined into the inside of the cap that seals or is supposed to seal uh, that section and nib off to keep the pen from drying out. Now let's do some size comparisons and some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample hopefully. Okay so as you can see from my gloves I got really tired, damn tired of having ink all over my fingers from this pen. Let's face it I'm tired. But we're gonna forge ahead with a little bit of protection. So here is the Himalaya V2 and it is with a Moonman Galaxy 8, M800, a Pen BBS Galaxy 500, a Pen BBS Galaxy 480, and a Moonman M600S in teal. And there we are with them uncapped and posted. Well, some of them posted. There's the Himalaya Galaxy. There's the M800 Moonman, but it hasn't got a Moonman nib. It has a Pen BVS fine nib in it because I swapped it out. And here is the Galaxy 500 Pen BBS with a fine Pen BBS nib. The Pen BBS 480 Galaxy with its number six fine nib. And the Moonman M600S. This one is very much like a Moonman number six nib, but it is a Shuiao uh, Mini Fude or Waverly style nib. Now let's look at some measurements. We're back with the Himalaya V2 from Fountain Pen Revolution. The paper here is Clairefontaine 90 GSM. And the ink, as you no doubt already know, as I've been using nearly half a bottle of this inking up my hands, is the Queasy Azure Number no. 5. There's the card for it. This is the FPR. Himalaya version 2. It is a medium steel nib. And let's check the wetness. You know it's <laughs> very wet. The nib is very smooth. And it's very stiff. There's not a lot of line variation to be had. Very little. Let's listen to it right. Yeah, I should put up here the ink. KWZ. And as for some reverse writing, it's very, very fine and very, very scratchy. And some quick writing. I don't 
think we're going to have any trouble keeping up here. This pen is a gusher. So what do I like and what do I not like about this pen? Well, first, it's very, very beautiful. The acrylic resin is extremely chatoyant and pearlescent, and the entire pen is made of this material, including the section. And I, I didn't mention this before, but the section is really beautiful. It's as pearlescent as the rest of the pen. The pen is light and comfortable, and the cap will post. For those that like posting your pen, it posts nicely, and it is also very comfortable for writing with it unposted as well. That's where the likes stop, I'm afraid. I have a lot of dislikes about this pen. I'll preface this list of dislikes by saying this pen just might be a dud. Uh, from the comments on the website, it seems others have experienced some of the things that I've experienced as well, and Kevin has actually stepped up and stepped in to help those customers with replacements. I have not as yet uh, contacted Kevin to return this pen. I'm going to give the pen a try as an eyedropper, I think, first. But here are my thumbs down comments. The clip and the band are very, very thin material. The clip is almost unusable, it is so thin. Even though the acrylic is really gorgeous on this pen, the finish inside is not. Uh, and I'm surprised to see that it wasn't uh, a little bit more polished on the inside of either the barrel or the cap. The threads are not polished at all, and so screwing and unscrewing the cap in the section feels scratchy and rough. And the threads are cut deep into that cap for a length that is unused, which makes me really question the, uh, the methods of putting this uh, pen together. The converter and the feed combination are the biggest problem with this pen. The converter smells of some kind of putrid grease or oil, and I've cleaned it four times now and it still stinks. It also sticks even when I've replaced the smelly grease with odorless silicone grease. It screws into the section really tightly, but obviously it does not seal inside of the barrel uh, because the ink runs out on the inside and uh, the barrel is able to push ink out of the nib when you're screwing it shut. The nib is also way too wet. Even though I heat set it a little bit, there it's gushing again. Um, even though I heat set it a little bit and narrowed that uh, nib, uh, it, uh, it is still, as you can see, writing very, very wet. The pen is clearly not usable out of the box. This pen retails for $35 US with $12 US shipping for a total of $47 US. My Pen BBS Galaxy 500, which is one of the high-end finishes of one of the high-end pens of the Pen BBS line, retails for $38.99 US with $6 US shipping for a total of $44.99 US. I got this Himalaya on special, uh, on a special discount sale at FPR for $26.78 before shipping, but that doesn't change the fact that the Pen BBS 500 is head and shoulders above the Himalaya for around the same price point. The engineering, the fit and finish, everything about this pen, the materials used, um, is superior to this uh, Himalaya for roughly the same pricing. So I'm going to go ahead and contact Kevin at FPR about this pen. And I'm also going to give the eyedropper a try, I think. If I can keep ink in this pen and not get messed up like this every time I pick it up, and if I can get this nib writing a little drier, this pen does look great. And the nib is very, very smooth. I mean, that's one of the things I really like about it is glassy smooth. So it might actually just stay on my desk because I do like the looks of it. Regardless, I'll follow up with an update when and if there is a replacement or a solution to this problem. So there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that bell to get an instant notification when new videos are posted. And that just leaves my inky fingers to say...
Thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.